Okay, this Vegeta is a bit busted. Welcome back to Dragon Ball The Breakers. Believe it or not, they have promised four seasons of DLC for this game, and this is season two. Honestly, they're doing a great job at reviving this game by releasing the best trailer they have ever done for it. Even before release, the trailers were not as good as this. This made me want to play Breakers again, after being done with it for months. Now, here's the problem. I log into the game, and the Raider is not free. You gotta buy him with TP medals. It is possible to grind it out, but goddamn, it's gonna take such a long time. If you wanna buy Vegeta with real money, it's about $6, which is a good price. And I actually went for the bundle, which comes with the two new characters, Chi Chi and Yajirobi. So I'm about $12 into this. There's also President Furry, but he's a battle pass reward, meaning we're definitely not playing him today and probably not ever. I think this business model would be absolutely fine if one, the game was free to play or two, you actually got more TP medals in each match. And to me, that's the biggest reason why this game died as fast as it did. Most people expected it to be free to play, so they did not buy in. And those that actually did quickly ran out of content or felt like their time was being wasted, the progression wasn't meaningful enough. And without crossplay, the player base became small enough that it just kind of died. But Dragon Ball The Breakers stuck pretty close to the Friday the 13th or Dead by Daylight model, which might be messed up, but those games have the numbers to pull it off. And on top of that, it's got gacha pools for all the new items you can get this season, all without a pity system. Let's see what we can get with the 10 free tickets that they gave us. Hold up, that's a 5 star, and the 5 star is a duplicate Frieza. Nice. Hey, we got the new Super Saiyan Gohan, and another one, and another one, great. Two duplicate Kohans, why not? It's for all these reasons that it is DLC day and this game is still super dead. 10 minute queue into disconnect. Perfect. Except it's not dead. To my surprise, that match was an exception. Today, the game is very much alive and we're getting games very quick. For the first one, I selected Chi Chi and we're up against Vegeta on the new stage. Chi Chi doesn't have a gun. Instead, she has an attack animation and the wind comes out of her attacks, meaning she still has a ranged move. The new stage has the Corrin Tower, which I just had to climb for the lore. And to my surprise, there's a bunch of chests at the top. The stage feels a lot smaller, but has a lot of rivers and mountains, so maybe it has more vertically, but using the bike definitely did not feel as powerful here. One of Chi Chi's skills is this brand new wall of fire that I used to save Trader, who was being chased by Vegeta. It's pretty massive, it kind of gives away your location, but it can be destroyed quickly too. But it's a big barrier, I'm sure you can find some creative ways to use it. The Raider made it all the way to level 4, and the power of the Great Ape is insane. Look at the range of this attack. There goes my level 2 transformation. Luckily, I had two cooldown drinks, so after a quick break we're able to transform again and interrupt the ape destroying the super time machine. I actually love how he picks it up because of how big he is. Looks like a toy in his hands. Now dodging these key blasts is easy but that stomp, that stomp is next level. I can't wait to try it out for myself. I managed to escape solo survivor and we're ready for the next game. Unfortunately that is the last time that I'm gonna be playing with these other content creators because they've made some changes to the party and matchmaking systems and those changes are kind of bad. You can no longer make a party of eight people for online matches. If you if you want to have eight people, you can go for practice mode. Otherwise, it's got to be seven or less. And those seven people are locked to the survivor role. That's right. Parties are only for survivors now. I don't know who asked for a change like this, but it kind of sucks. I wanted to party up with these guys. We don't have eight players, but I'd like to play the Raider at some point. The old system would allow me to do this, set the Raider as a priority, and eventually I'd get to play as Vegeta. But now this game is a game that I have to play by myself if I ever want a chance of playing the Raider. I can't play this game with friends anymore. And that's a big no-no. Now you can select your role before you queue, and you can hard lock the raider or survivor instead of just setting a preference. If you want to set a preference like you did before, that's the flex mode in the middle. Now I'm queuing as a flex raider, solo, which is gonna raise my priority, meaning I'll get raider at some point. And we're going for Yajirobi here on game two. He starts with the Senzu Bean, and he can drag bodies while reviving them. Not the most useful stuff. Whenever you go up against Vegeta, you might find the sword in one of these boxes. You can use the sword on the monkey on the great ape, making it revert back to Vegeta. And you kind of have have to because the great ape does not take any damage at all. But I found the sword as Yajirobi, which means now I'm dual wielding. Dual wielding Yajirobi. That's kind of hot. Nappa found me pretty quickly, but luckily Vegeta saved me. Nappa, that's enough. I'll take care of them. This didn't make sense at the time, but you'll understand it once we play as the Raider ourselves. Our team has the seven Dragon Balls, but Vegeta finds us and takes two of us down. But then he doesn't finish us off. This Raider seems playful. He even let my teammates revive me, and at first I thought this was a troll, but again, it all made sense when I played as Vegeta later. This game was a total loss. Vegeta went great ape, no one had a sword, people didn't know he was invulnerable to any kind of damage, it was hopeless. Just like my chances of playing as a Raider. Another game as a survivor. And another. And another. 
another. Priority kept going up and up, all the way to priority 9, and still, no radar at all. And it makes perfect sense. This matchmaking system is broken. It doesn't matter how high your priority is, if there's someone else in the world locked in as the radar, they have priority infinite. They just had to suffer through a long queue time, but you, you will never be the raider unless you suffer through that queue time. It doesn't matter how high your priority level is. The way this queue system changed makes the priority system completely pointless. And so, it was time to queue as the raider and just eat that queue time. It was long, but anything for content. The Cyberman evolution is very interesting. You can become Nappa by evolving normally, or you can get it instantly by hitting someone with a self-destruct, which is a one-hit kill. It's the fastest possible evolution in the entire game. And Nappa is actually the same. You can level up normally by finishing off civilians or attacking survivors. And Vegeta will just interrupt you and say, that's enough, Nappa. The first time this happened to me, I was so pissed at Vegeta. He saved that survivor. I had him. But then I remembered that that's exactly what happened to me as Yajirobe. On the other hand, if Nappa dies, Vegeta also comes in, kills Nappa, and triggers the evolution anyway. The thing is, one of Vegeta's abilities is to call Nappa. What does Nappa do? I don't know. He didn't do anything every single time I called him. But he's not available if he actually died. So that's a downside. And also, if you want to turn into the Great Ape, you do so with this ability right here that has a huge cooldown. You don't gain power when you play as Vegeta. You don't level up normally. You always have to wait for that cooldown to go into level 4. And that cooldown is even bigger if Nappa dies. So that's the disadvantage, but it feels absolutely busted. As a survivor, one of the best strategies you have to defeat the Raider is to level up as fast as possible and jump the Raider before they get too powerful. But if you do that against this Raider, you're only helping them evolve. So playing as Vegeta felt super easy to win as the Raider, because the only way you can die is if the survivors actually kill Vegeta. And at that point, you're pretty powerful already. That said, getting to the Great Ape was a challenge. The only match where I got to Great Ape was one where I actually let one survivor escape, because my timer was almost done. And when I transformed, I lost track of that survivor, and they actually escaped. Which made me think back to this Vegeta right here. This guy was not being a troll. This guy just wanted to play as Great Ape, and it was letting us live, because that was the only way to do so. It's like I'm losing on purpose just so I can play with the Great Ape, which I paid for and had to wait 10 whole minutes to even try once. Anyway, now that we've got some knowledge and experience on how this character works, let's play one final game. The perfect Vegeta game, where I'm actually gonna try to transform into the Great Ape as soon as possible. We start as the Cyberman, and at this point I'll take a self-destruct or a normal evolution, whichever comes first. There are Cybermen planted all over the map, and these act as small radars that detect survivors nearby. And you can instantly teleport to any of them with one of your abilities, but it's on a cooldown, so you shouldn't abuse it. You also have a projectile spit on a cooldown, or just throw key blasts. The thing is, the self-destruct can activate from really far away, so it looks like it's the only attack you have, but no, if you're further away, you've got key blasts too. In this case, we're able to find a survivor and surprise them with a suicide attack, and now we're Nappa. Our only priority with Nappa is to gather the Dragon Balls, and for that, we're gonna need a Dragon Radar. Time to open some boxes. I found a Dragon Ball pretty quick, followed by a level 3 Radar, right where we killed the other survivor. That is perfect, but these guys actually came ready to fight. They make me drop the Dragon Ball, and I could die right here and turn to Vegeta right away, but I thought, how about I just escape, get to a better place, because I need to destroy one of these areas, make this a smaller stage that they cannot run away from me when I turn into the Great Ape, and just like that, we are hunting Dragon Balls, but these guys are persistent. They believe they can win the game right now if they finish me off. Maybe they don't know that all that's gonna happen is I'm gonna turn into Vegeta when I die. This fight left a lot of bodies behind, and the survivors weren't very good at reviving their own teammates, so a lot of them fell as I gathered the seven Dragon Balls. Finally, one of them lands the final blow, and they find out the hard way the mistake they just made. Now we've got the big cooldown since Nappa died, but that's okay, because we're just gonna use the Dragon Balls to level up, and they actually tried stealing the Dragon Balls and got pretty damn close to doing so. I didn't notice this third survivor at all, but they ran away, were able to summon Shenron, and ask to see the full moon. I wish more survivors were alive, because I tried to trigger the super time machine phase, but two of them died while I was in the animation to destroy one of those areas. With only two survivors left, they quickly escaped on the small time machine before I even left that cutscene. So even though I put all my time and energy to leveling up to the Great Ape, and got pretty lucky with the Dragon Radar and all the Dragon Balls, I still couldn't manage to play as the Great Ape at all. This DLC feels way too powerful. I think that's fine, I just wish I could actually play as a Great Ape once in a while. It feels like everyone dies when I'm Vegeta. But that's fine, that's something that the balance patch can fix. What I still find unforgivable is this business model. It's gross. It's not free to play, and yet it exploits players as if it was. Even though I already bought the game itself, and I'd say the same about the games that this is imitating. I know what they're doing, I still don't think it's right. And the group and matchmaking changes, I am of two minds. On one hand, I had really fast matches today, so they were doing something right. On the other hand, not being able to play with friends, because it will lock you to the survivor role, is something that will actively 
actually make me stop playing this game. This is not a game that I'm gonna boot up when I'm by myself. So this game just becomes pointless with this change. And that to me is how this game is gonna die for a second time. That said, how do you guys feel about it? Are you coming back to Breakers to try out the DLC? Or is this game out of your life for good? Let me know in the comments. For some reason, it was easier to play Taiketsu with friends than it is Breakers right now. And if you don't believe me, just check out this video. It's the worst Dragon Ball game of all time, and yet it works, kind of? See you guys there. Bye.